night, guys. It is a cool, rainy night. About time we had some rain here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm here on this gloomy. It is a Friday night. That would be May 27th, 2022, I believe. So, uh, I have some uh, Airbnb guests arriving at some point, so if I have to jump up in the middle of this rant, I apologize, but I think I've got time, since it is Friday, to squeeze out yet another ecological meltdown roundup rant where we simply check in with our friends over at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to see what's on their mind as Rhett brings us another <coughs> laundry list of assaults against this planet. And uh, we're going to start with a look back at history. Do you realize it has been 60 years since Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring? Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, 60 years on, birds still fading from the skies. I, I first read that as birds still falling from the sky, which is what they are. I guess in India is where the latest birds is falling out of the, out of the damn sky. Anyway, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring catalyzed the modern environmental movement and sparked a ban on DDT in the U.S. and most other nations, although DDT has since been replaced by a growing number of other harmful biocides. Now, 60 years after the publication of Silent Spring, birds face more threats than any other animal group because they live in or migrate through every habitat on Earth. Birds are impacted by land use changes, pollution ranging from pesticides to plastics, climate change, invasive species, diseases, hunting, the wildlife trade, don't forget domestic cats, and more. And uh, under the more category, I was uh, sweeping out my trailer a couple of hours ago and found a desiccated, dried up little wren on the floor of my trailer. I have no idea how this wren got in, so uh, th there you go. So they, the threats that birds face. The 2022 update to the State of the World's Birds report notes winners and losers. Winners and losers amid increasing human alteration of the planet, but it documents a continued downward trend. I'm a little unclear who the winners are. Who are the winners to be a bird on the planet? Maybe pigeons? Maybe pigeons? Uh, anyway, that would be a short list of the winners all right, from dead birds to, uh, well, I guess this is dead birds and a bunch of other dead stuff. <clears throat> Stained by oil, a history of spills and impunity in Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, and Bolivia. The reporting alliance Manchados Petroleo which is Spanish for stained by oil, tracked down government records of oil spill cases and fines against companies working in the Amazon of Peru, Colombia, Bolivia, and Ecuador, not covering Brazil here, between 2011 and 2021. Uh, one constant in the investigation was a lack 
of both information and transparency, hmm, especially in Bolivia, Ecuador, and Colombia. The database constructed from government documents, not from NGOs, from government documents themselves revealed there were at least 282 cases against 72 oil companies in Peru and Colombia, and that around half of them have been fined for more than $55 million. Uh, I wonder how much of that they have collected. In all four countries, oil drilling lots overlap with indigenous territories and protected areas. There are now 1,646 indigenous communities and 52 protected areas that partially or completely overlap with extractive activities. And that was, uh, you know, the book that I wrote, Peruvian Plunge. Uh, back in 2009, which was actually had a chapter excerpted here in right here in Manga Bay, I was looking at Hunt Oil Company down in the Madre de Dios, the Mother of God River. Uh, you can find anyone interested in finding out about my travels down there. Uh, I think Barnes and Nobles. You can find Peruvian Plunge. Uh, I don't know who that guy is, who they said was the author of that book. But anyway, some, uh, <clears throat> anyway, we're not going to go there. Moving on. Okay. I just got back from, uh, how many dollars did I spend buying wood at Home Depot yesterday? Yes. Investors force, oh yes, investors force Home Depot to review their wood sourcing policy over logging concerns. Now, a guy, guys, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but it's right here. You heard it in Manga Bay. Did you realize that some, some of Home Depot's plywood is allegedly sourced? Hmm. from vulnerable forest in Ecuador's Chocó region and the Brazilian Cerrado, and conservationists and investors hmm, have pressured the home improvement giant to clean up its supply chain. Yes. Uh, okay, here we go. One proposal passed at the shareholders meeting last week, a proposal passed requiring Home Depot to reevaluate its policies related to sustainability certifications of wood suppliers. Although the proposal does not technically force the company to change its policies, Conservationists are confident, are confident it will lead to tangible action. Yes, and uh, yeah, anyway, we can put that one in the uh, hopium roundup tomorrow. Okay, here we go. <coughs> Speaking of hopium on one level, eco tours that uh, famous uh, slippery slope eco tours aimed at saving monkeys are actually likely stressing them out, study finds. A recent study reveals that tourist boats approaching troops of proboscis monkeys in Malaysian Borneo cause the animals stress. Yes, even when the boats travel at slow speeds. Mm -hmm. The research reveals something of a universal stress response, closely tracking similar findings from ecotourism operations 
focused on other animals, such as birds and whales. Wildlife tourism is increasingly seen as a way to raise awareness around conservation is issues and provide local communities with a source of income that is contingent upon the protection of ecosystems. Yes. So, you know, this whole thing with ecotourism, I used to be an eco-tour guide in Costa Rica myself. You know, it's a slippery slope, guys. Uh, like, like anything in the world, uh, there is such a thing as moderation and balance. Uh, anyway, this is why I am on the fence about ecotourism. There is certainly all different flavors of ecotourism. It is a, uh, it paints with a broad swipe. But anyway, we have to move on. Uh, easing of crackdown sees Vietnamese boats encroach into Indonesian waters. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Illegal fishing by Vietnamese vessels in Indonesian waters has ramped up this year, with locals and fishermen observing that blaming a, de a dearth of patrols by Indonesian authorities. Ha, uh, imagine that. Uh, anyway, uh, enforcement against illegal fishing appears to have eased with exactly zero Vietnamese vessels seized in Indonesian waters so far this year compared to 54 the year before and 234 between 2015 and 2019. Yes. What a surprise. I love this one. Uh, I don't know if this is some unintentional humor. A whiz and a buzz. <laughs> a whiz and a buzz. B attacks at Sri Lanka Rock Fortress point to a need for toilets. Yes, a leading bee expert in Sri Lanka has attributed seemingly unprovoked bee attacks on visitors at the Sigiraya Rock for Fortress to poor toilet habits by visitors with no toilet facilities at the popular tourist site Visitors urinate in a concealed corner of the fort, leaving puddles that the bees are drawn to over the sodium and sugar. Yes. Uh, authorities say providing toilets would be a positive step towards ending the attacks. Yes. Uh, now that obviously leaves an unanswered question, but we're not going to turn Collapse Chronicles into toilet humor. A whiz and a buzz. Anyway. Uh, all right, we just heard that story. Uh, all right, we have technology saving the planet. All right. <coughs> Moving on. This is a, well, it says right here, a complicated story. Drivers of Columbia's peacetime deforestation weave a complex web. Um... I, I, anyway, the, the bottom line uh, of the story, it really doesn't make any difference. I'm oversimplifying. It, it doesn't make any difference uh, whether uh, Colombia or any other country is at war or at peace. 
either way, there are winners and losers, but the losers outweigh the winners every time, it, 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 regardless uh, of, of whether the place is, is at war or at peace. As far as being one of our fellow Earthlings, they can't notice the difference. It's just that the threats shift between uh, wartime threats and peacetime threats. Makes no difference. Uh, humans are humans. Whether they're war criminals or peaceniks, they are going to be declaring war on the planet. Uh, let's move over from Colombia to Cambodia, where you will be shocked to find development threatens a last refuge of wildlife rescued from illegal trade. Yes, a 2,300 hectare forest. This is about 5,000 acres where animals rescued from their wildlife trade in Cambodia are rehabilitated and released is now in danger of being cleared under a new government scheme. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> the details of what might <clears throat> replace the forest are unclear. Yes. Uh. Anyway, moving on, uh, you would not believe that results of a mining tax for reforestation in the Democratic Republic of the Con Congo leave more questions than answers. Yes, mining and logging companies in the DRC are liable to pay a deforestation tax to restore areas impacted by their activities. Yes. However, after about 20 years since the deforestation tax was implemented, reforested areas are few and far between. Environmentalists and locals question what the taxes collected from mining companies is being used for. Hmm, with corruption and financial mismanagement seen as a source of the problem. The National Forest Fund, the Environmental Ministry, and political officials did not respond to Mongabay's request for comment. Okay, you will not believe this. We're going to stay in sub-Saharan Africa. We're going to go over from the DRC to Kenya. You will not believe that conflict over resources in Kenya hits deadly highs. Increased droughts, floods, and invasive species, namely the increase in the number one invasive species on the planet, which would be Homo sapiens. Okay, let's make, let's completely, just so there is no doubt about what invasive species they're talking about in this story. Increased droughts, increased floods, increased invasive species, meaning increased humans are fueling violent conflicts between pastoralists over livestock in Kenya's central Baringo County, the intensity of which is exacerbated by the proliferation of illegal firearms in the region. Yes. Uh... Firearms trafficked from civil conflicts have made their way into the hands of pastoralists who now see them, the, you know, the guns, as the only way to defend themselves and their cattle during raids and conflicts over grazing land. Yes. Last year, 
there were 16, uh, you know, official deaths from the raids. In the first four months of this year, there have been 39 fatalities from 24 violent clashes, half of them due to livestock raids. Violent conflicts are linked to insecurity in neighboring countries and drought along with politics only heighten the precarious situation in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Good Lord, this is just the African uh, roundup. Um, this is China you know, take the, the Chinese fishing fleets uh, eating all the fish in Sierra Leone. Yep, yep, yep. Sierra Leone versus China. Let's take a uh, guess who's going to win that one. What's going on with communities Community foresters in the Philippines. I'm going to let you figure out for yourself uh, what is going on with community foresters in the Philippines. Okay, let's check out the palm oil wars over there in Indonesia. The promise was a lie. Imagine that, the promise from an Indonesian palm oil company was a lie. How Indonesian villagers lost their cut of the palm oil boom. Yes, an investigation by Manga Bay and others estimates that Indonesian villagers are losing hundreds of millions of dollars every year because palm oil producers are failing to comply with regulations requiring them to share their plantations with communities. Yes, the quote plasma scheme, whatever that means, the plasma scheme was intended, well, you know, on paper, to lift communities out of poverty. But it has become a major source of unrest across the countries as government interventions fail to compel palm oil companies to deliver on their commitments and legal obligations. Yes, palm oil from those companies is flowing into the supply chains of major consumer goods firms like Kellogg's and Johnson and Johnson. Some have pledged to investigate. Yes. Uh, okay, what is going on with biomass burning? Good Lord, you know, biomass burning right up there, you know, with hydropower, one of the, you know, one of the cornerstones of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is to burn down the planet to save the planet. Okay, as biomass burning surges in, ja in Japan and South Korea, where will Asia get its wood? Probably from the Okefenokee Swamp, is my guess. Uh, anyway, in 2021, Japan and South Korea imported a combined 6 million metric tons of wood pellets for what proponents claim is, quote, carbon neutral energy which, of course, is one of the single biggest bright green lies. Well, there's so many 
which one is these, well, electric vehicles are the biggest bright gray light, but biomass burning, not too far down the list of the bright green, like flat out greenwashing bullshit, okay? Large subsidies for biomass have led Japan to import massive amounts of wood pellets from Vietnam, which not surprising, and guess the second country would be Canada. Yes, two wood pellet giants are now eyeing Japan for growth. Yes, South Korea imports most of its pellets from Vietnamese acacia plantations, which environmentalists fear may pressure natural forest. Do you think so? South Korea wants to grow its native production tenfold, including logging areas with high conservation value. And now Vietnam, which is already exporting the stuff, may soon follow Japan and South Korea's path. And exper experts fear all of this could add massive pressure on Southeast Asian forests, which are already among the most endangered forests in the world, as the United Nations continues to promote biomass burning to save the planet from fossil fuels. And of course, what's that guy's name? Bill McKibben. You know, Bill McKibben being one of the big flag wavers for uh, burning down the planet to save the planet. All right. Um, here's this article on seed banks. I'm, uh, you know, we're going to put that one in the hopium file. Uh, I, I love how they're talking about saving tropical seeds by sending them to these Valbard seed vault in the Norwegian Arctic. Yes, including rice, beans, peppers, and pumpkins with corn, passion fruit, and cashews to follow. How long did the Doomsday Seed Vault last before it started flooding? because of uh, ice melt in the air. I think it was like the 10th year where it started filling up with water from the melting uh, ice caps. All right. Gee, another shocking headline. You know, once again, this is why I depend on Rhett Butler to uh, keep me in the loop because I never would have figured this out on my own. Did you realize, guys, that repeated fires are silencing the Amazon? You know, this is in recognition of 60 years since Silent Spring. Repeated fires are silencing the Amazon, says new acoustic monitoring study. Researchers recorded thousands of hours of animal sounds in areas that had been logged, areas that had been burned once, and those burned multiple times along the arc of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. And as shocking as this is to believe, in those forests with repeated fires, animal communication networks were quieter, with less diversity of sound than in the just simply logged forest, or the forest burned only one time. Yes. The authors were surprised to find that insects, not birds, were the most obvious signal of forest degradation. Uh, I guess the not hearing any insects uh, there is a major difference in the biodiversity of a forest that has been burned only one time 
versus one that has been burned a bunch of times. Yes. So, protecting forest from repeated fires is still worthwhile. Imagine that. Okay, take a wild guess. What is going on with mangrove restoration in Tanzania? Tigger, are you finally, uh, Tigger is coming to life. All right, Tigger is yelling. Tigger is waking up. Take a wild guess what is going on with mangrove restoration in Tanzania. Ah, that, that is a contradiction in terms. Mangrove re restoration in Tanzania, that's kind of like a chipmunk restoration at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Anyway, poor planning and persistent farming undermine mangrove restoration in Tanzania, yes. Tanzania's government has been working since the 1990s to replant mangroves in some delta, one of East Africa's most significant mangrove sites. But new research indicates that efforts to restore degraded mangroves in Tanzania have been undermined by rice farming as well as by a lack of planning and analysis of site and species suitability. Yes. Imagine that. Okay, we have the UN, if not saving the planet, at least saving the planet nibblers. UN rights group flags potential violations in a $3 billion Indonesian tourism project. The UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights has again raised concerns about alleged violations against local and indigenous communities who are being moved for a tourism development project in Indonesia. The Indonesian government envisions building a, quote, New Bali, including resorts, hotels, and a racetrack. Uh, good Lord. Anyway, uh, moving on. Okay, this is, uh, I already had a full rant about this. This is just Rhett uh, weighing in on, uh, you know, for anyone who is not, figured this out yet. For wildlife on Brazil's highways, roadkill is just the tip of the iceberg, as they say. I've already done this rant. Okay, but this is Mangabe's version of that story. More than 400 million, more than 400 million wild vertebrates, meaning you, you have to have a backbone to be even counted in this study. 400 million wild vertebrates are estimated to be run over on Brazil's highways every year, but roadkill is only one of the impacts from building roads through biodiverse areas. Road construction also entails deforestation, as well as chemical noise and light pollution and the introduction of invasive species, namely Homo sapiens, all of which pose threats to native species. Yes, and then they, you know, talking about building viaducts for the passage of wildlife. I talked about that a couple of nights ago. Anyway, guys, uh, this goes on and on. Uh, okay, we have another story about tigers. We're going to, well, are we going to finish up? Because Tigger is, you can hear Tigger, he's been telling me, Tigger, do you have something to say about tiger conservation in Nepal? What do you think, Tigger? Nope. 
you're not gonna you're not gonna speak on it. I thought Tigger was gonna have something to say just then. Anyway, tiger centric conservation, tiger centric conservation efforts push other predators to the fringes. Yes, Nepal and India have made huge strides in boosting their tiger populations over the past decade, but these conservation actions may have come at the expense of other predators. In Nepal, species such as leopards and sloth bears have been pushed to the fringes of conservation areas that have been optimized for tigers leading to increased human-wildlife conflict. Yes. Uh, anyway, good for the tigers. We have, t from tigers to turtles, we have 200 mysterious sea turtle deaths in Kenya. Uh, while the cause of the dead sea turtles have yet to be determined, uh, conservationists suspect the turtles' problems may be associated with pollution from nearby salt mines. Anyway, guys, uh, it, just, it just never ends. It just never ends. So I'm going to end it right here because I'm hoping... Uh, I'm going to have some Airbnb guests. i got to get my little predator who got pushed to the fringes. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your own Airbnb experience while you still can before a tiger pushes you to the fringes. Bye, guys.